So uh, on the bike frame, you have all these things: your cable stops, uh, you know, little rack mounts, cable guides, brake mounts, all these different things. They're called brazons. This is a practical guide to brazons. So they're called brazons. It's because you braze them on, right? So these are my little brazing clamps that I make for that specific task. And uh, so they're just these little pieces of, of material, right? And you have cable stops. You have, um, you know, this is a, got a cable guide in it. These are cable guides. You can zip tie a, a you know, brake housing or something onto your frame with that mount. Uh, you know, there's brake mounts. These are the uh, the seat binders that you know when you put them on and you tighten the screw, then then it clamps your seat post on the frame. Uh, yeah, brake mounts. This one here is a Crown Race seat for a fork. Uh, these are reinforcers for um, for you know like these here are your water bottle bosses for where you want to mount a water bottle cage, and if you want to reinforce around those then you can put one of these on or sometimes I would use a washer that I had stamped into a into a uh, round profile so all these little pieces go on the frame and you can braze them on so brazing happens where you use an oxyacetylene torch and you heat up the frame and the braze on the little you know little doodad you heat them up together with this pasty stuff called flux that protects it from oxidation and then when it gets up to the temperature that you want then you can add some filler wire of silver or bronze and that melts at a lower temperature Temperature than the steel and then when it cools that that filler metal freezes again and now it's bonded on there and it's nice and strong and it's a it's a pretty clean and simple way to bond these kinds of things to a steel frame bike you could also weld them and so when people talk about brazons that name came about like you know long time ago when everybody was brazing bikes but now welding is common and you know probably more popular than brazing at least uh, globally when it comes to making bikes and so a lot of them get welded on but you still usually call them brazons um you know you could refer to them as cable stops or whatever but you're, you're going to hear the term brazons right when it comes to like a titanium frame and an aluminum frame uh you generally don't have any choice but to weld them so sometimes you can rivet things on in these other frame materials or if it's like a carbon frame you might epoxy it on uh, i think I've heard about brazing with aluminum, uh, which I don't know if that's like viable or if that's just sort of like a kooky idea, but there's no application. I don't really know that much about it, but I've heard of it. Uh, but with, with steel frames, you definitely have the choice of brazing them, or if you want to, you can weld them. And one of the big considerations there is that generally, brazing is a little bit more accessible and easier, and it goes a little bit smoother. Depends on what you're welding, but if you have one of these little pieces, and it's kind of heavy, it's kind of chunky, more or less. And if you're trying to weld this onto your top tube, for instance, and if you're in the middle of the tube in the unbutted section where it's real thin, you have a relatively thick chunk of material, and you have a rel relatively thin tube, and uh, you know it's possible that you could compromise the you know the strength of that tube or something. That's the argument I've heard. And uh, when you braze, you're you're bringing up the temperature, so you're introducing heat, but when you braze, you're actually, uh, like if you add silver or bronze, there's actually a little micro fillet at the corners of this, so you don't have these sharp, hard corners, and you don't really have the potential to undercut your main tube, uh, you're heating it, so that, you know, that could structurally compromise it if you heat it too much, or you don't let it cool properly, but, um, but there's a little micro fillet there of the brazing alloy, and so I think it's generally, my experience has been that it's, it's easier to do that sort of thing with brazing if it's an option to you. TIG welding has some nice benefits because it's cleaner. You don't have to mess with flux. You don't have to soak flux off. And, uh, and if you have a routine going where you're, you know, you're welding it all together, then you might just weld it on and that could be beneficial in some ways too. So uh, you can, to some degree, make these yourself. It depends on the tools you have around and that sort of thing. But most of the time, it makes a lot of sense to just buy them uh, because they're really tedious to make and most of us don't have CNC machines and that sort of stuff. It is cool though to see people make their own. Uh, anyway, you have a, n a number of different suppliers. Paragon Machine Works sells so many different little parts like this. This one here is for uh, post mount or uh, not flat mount brakes on the rear end of your bike. Uh, you know, little disc brake mounts, all sorts of stuff you can get from them and uh, really pretty reasonable prices if you compare that to the amount of time that you'd put into custom fabricate each of these little things uh, and, and and they come in all different flavors so like Paragon Machine Works as the name implies 
but they machine everything. And these are done on CNC machines with you know spinning cutters. You also have casting. So if you buy stuff from uh, Nova Cycle Supply, a lot of that's going to be cast. Like this here, they actually have a mold that is a negative of this, and then they pour in steel, and uh, and the liquid steel then freezes, and they you know they break the mold or whatever, and they get it out. I don't know if it's a sand casting process, but a lot of cast parts, and those are cool because they sometimes they can have a more complicated geometry or something, and they're generally cheaper too than machine parts. Um, although they're not always as shiny and as pretty, so it's uh, you know it's it's different offerings, and they work some of them work better in different places than others. You also have forged stuff. So um, I believe these dropouts were forged, which is like a you know it's 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 a process where they're I don't really understand that much about forging but I think it it happens under a lot of pressure and they they kind of shape it in there and then some things are actually stamped I don't know if I have an example of that handy there's not a whole lot well yeah, here we go these little uh, zip tie zip tie guides here these were stamped out of sheet metal right and so there's all different processes and um, uh, you know, it just it kind of depends what you're after, what you're going to look for. Machine parts are really nice. I love machining, and uh, you know, but but there's there's just different options, and there's different suppliers. So there's Seaway in the UK sells a lot of this stuff. Paragon Machine Works sells a lot of this stuff. Nova Cycle Supply sells a ton of this stuff. Um, Frame Builder Supply has some stuff. Solid BMX has a couple little things that are generally more geared toward BMX. Um, there's probably other ones that I'm forgetting. I'll try and put a, a more comprehensive list in the video description, and. Um, you know, if you can pick up the stuff that you need and it suits the needs of your project, it just saves you so much time and hassle over trying to screw around making this stuff yourself. Alternatively, if you like that kind of stuff and if you're going for the extraordinary, you know, maybe that makes sense to you to, to go out of your way to make every little detail and make them beautiful. Uh, people have done really cool stuff when they take the time to make their own, you know, little dropouts and stuff. Uh, especially, as I mentioned in the, in the video about my favorite frame builders, I mentioned Druid Engine Cycles. Drew has CNC machines. He has he works with Peter Verdot a lot to get parts designed to meet his specific needs. You know, he's thinking critically about the design and the stuff off the shelf isn't always right, so he'll work with Peter, he'll get a better design that suits his needs better or that just maybe reflects his aesthetic or both. And then he'll uh, he'll machine it and put it into his frames and I think that's awesome. You know, I think when you're going through the trouble of building a custom bike, it is not out of the question to go just kind of nuts into the details if that's what you want to do. On the other hand, it takes a lot of time and a lot of resources to do that kind of stuff and sometimes just picking up a little machine part that has a lot of engineering and design into it for like eight bucks or something, that's uh, that's a, it can be money really well spent if it frees you up to focus on other things that maybe are more important to the big picture of what you're trying to do. So hopefully that's all the information you need to know to get up to speed on what brazons are and the applications that they're generally found in. If you're making bikes and you don't have a set of these brazing clamps, you should consider picking these up from my web store. They just, you know, while you're brazing these little things on, for years I was screwing around when I would make bikes and I wouldn't have just the right clamp. And it's really frustrating. These things, you get them up to temperature, they're hot, and then your clamp slips and the part falls on the floor. And now it was clean metal and it had this flux on it. It's it's like 900 degrees, it's on the floor, you're in the middle of your braise, uh, all the dirt and crap on your floor is sticking to the, the flux on your thing and you know just having good clamps really allows you to do better work. And these are designed to, to solve specific problems. So these aren't going to work in every instance in every single application, but they work well in a lot of applications and they work better than some of the other options in specific applications too. And uh, yeah, check out my video about these and uh, buy a pair of them in my web store if you're into them. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one.